This video will show how to sense touch using the VEX bumper sensor. First we'll cover how to set up the bumper sensor, then we'll look at how to use the wait until blocks to create programs using the sensor, and finally we'll end off by creating a simple obstacle avoidance program. Alright, so I've got my base bot here with a bumper sensor attached on the front. Instructions can be found in the description for the base bot and base bot with sensors. But something to keep note of is the sensor instructions actually say to put the bumper on the back instead of the front, so do make sure that you move it to the front of the robot instead. Since this is our first video on sensors, I also want to show you how to use the devices menu to see what your sensors and motors are doing. From the home screen here, I can hop into the devices menu, and here I see all the devices for a robot, including the motors on ports 1 and 6, and our bumper sensor over here on port 8. If I push in the bumper sensor, we even get this helpful indicator showing that it's been pressed, and we can even turn the motors and see that the velocity changes. So this devices menu is super handy if any motors or sensors aren't behaving like you expect. Just hop into the devices menu and see what's going on. Probably the most common issue is that the wires aren't plugged in all the way or that something's put in the wrong port, but occasionally a motor or a sensor might also be faulty. To showcase how the bumper sensor works, I've gone ahead and taken it apart and there's two main components here. There's this switch part and this other circuit board piece. On the button, there's this little piece of metal that moves up and down as the buttons push, and it bridges the gap between these two other pieces of conductive metal. So whenever the gap is bridged between these two pieces here, it says that the bumper sensor's been pressed. So if I take something else metal here, like the screwdriver, and touch it to the pieces of metal, it'll say that the bumper's been pressed. All right, switching gears over here to the code editor, the first thing we need to do is set up the devices for our robot. Quickest way is through file, open examples, templates, and then base bot with sensors. Over here in the devices menu, we can see everything that the template added. We got our motors along with all the different sensors, but really the only one we care about right now is the bumper sensor on port eight. For our first program with the bumper sensor, I wanna change this drive forward program so that the robot only drives forward when the bumper sensor is pressed. For this, we'll use a new block under the control section called wait until. Just like other waiting blocks we've seen, this one will wait for something to happen before moving on to other blocks. So we'll put it right here before our drive forward block. What's special about the wait until block is that it has this little diamond shaped spot here where we tell it what we want it to wait for. What we want to wait for is for the bumper sensor to be pressed. So I'll hop down here to the sensing tab, find the bumper, and then I'll drag it over here into the wait until block until it outlines in yellow. If I run this on the robot, now our program will wait until the bumper sensor has been pressed before driving forward. Now you probably noticed that the diamond shape of the bumper 8 press block is the same as the diamond shape on the wait until block. This is because all the diamond shaped blocks are a special kind of data type called a boolean. We'll talk more about booleans in other videos, but for now you can just think of them as answers to yes or no questions. For example, is the bumper pressed is a yes or no question because either it's pressed or it isn't. There's also other blocks with the diamond shape, for example, is the robot done driving, or is the robot moving? Has the distance sensor found an object? Does the optical sensor see red? And a ton more. All of these blocks can be used with the wait until block, and the wait until block will just keep waiting, waiting until the answer to that question is yes. So in our program that we made, the wait until block just keeps waiting until the answer to the question bumper eight pressed is yes, and then the robot drives forward. I've gone ahead and made some changes to our program, so what do you think it will do now that it has a drive forward, a wait until bumper pressed, and then a stop driving? When we run this, the robot starts out driving forward, and then the wait block keeps it driving forward until the bumper sensor is pressed, and then the robot stops driving. To finish out this video, let's create a program to model how a robot vacuum works. Most robot vacuums have a large bumper sensor in the front to avoid walls and furniture in a house just like the bumper sensor on our robot. For our program, we'll change out our stop driving block and instead drive reverse for a few inches. After that, let's make the robot turn for 90 degrees. And then we'll wrap the whole thing in a forever block so it just keeps going. If we run this code, our robot now drives around our quote unquote house and we can now put obstacles in the way of the robot and it can find its way around them. What we've done here with this simple program is pretty amazing because for the first time our robot is no longer just driving around blindly, but we're actually using sensors to detect our environment and react to it. 
and pretty soon we'll see a bunch of different sensors we can use to sense our environment in different ways. But for now, that's just about it. If this video helped you out, don't forget to click the like button to help others find it, and feel free to subscribe so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.